Whether you call it a mora, a mora knife, or my best attempt at the uh, phonetically more correct mora knif, a mora is an absolutely iconic budget knife. We like to say that mora stands for mora over really anything because they're so good and so inexpensive that it's often hard to justify recommending anything else. But can this icon be beat? Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and welcome to this episode of Beat the Icon, where we take a look at the Mora knife. Now, knives have been made in the Mora region of Sweden, which is where these get their name from, for over 400 years, uh, but the seeds for the modern company started in 1891, and there's been various knife making companies in the Mora region over the years, but the last two big holdouts uh, finished consolidating only fairly recently, uh, you know, fully consolidated in about 2016 to form the Murakneef company. This is the classic number two, kind of the classic old school style of a Mora knife. And the things that are great about this, one, low price, even though these aren't the lowest price versions anymore. Bushcrafters love the Scandi grind on this knife. You can kind of think of it as like a double planed chisel. It's great for carving wood, especially some of the softer European wood, spirit, wood species out there. It just works fantastically, but it's also just the general purpose grind that Scandinavian knives would come with in order to do everything. And for that reason, even today, they're great for just about anything. Some of them are priced low enough. They make great beater knives that don't feel like cheap knives, even though they are inexpensive, and they can do just about anything. You can put them about just about anywhere, and you can use them for just about anything. Now the question comes now, for doing this uh, Beat the Icon series, how do we come up with some representative models? Because uh, we're not talking about just one model in this video. We're talking about you know the Mora as a brand. So what are the, the representative models here? Uh, what about the Garberg, some of you may already be saying? Well, the Garberg is undoubtedly a very durable, very high performing knife, and it's something that Mora enthusiasts have been clamoring over for years. You've got a full length tang, you've got great blade shape, great ergonomics, but the reason Moras are iconic, in my mind, is not because of what the Garberg is. You know, the Mora is iconic because they make knives that are so inexpensive that don't feel cheap, that they outperform their price range far beyond what you would expect. And the Garberg doesn't quite do that. So great knife, not what we're gonna talk about. We do have to talk about the classic style of the number two right here. Um, these come in right now these days about $36. Uh, so not the cheapest Moras out there. Uh, the classic wood handles here take a little bit more time, a little bit more cost, but they feel great. They work in a ton of different grips. Uh, they come with a carbon steel blade. Uh, some old versions were even triple laminated. Uh, I don't think you can get stainless on any of these versions currently, uh, but the carbon steel is roughly equivalent to 1095 if they're still using the same stuff I'm familiar with. Sheath is simple and lightweight and compact, injection molded with a leather flap here on the back for your belt loop. We also have to take a look at the Companion, which in my mind is kind of the quintessential modern Mora. Injection molded handle, partial tang, but a pretty robust tang going on there. And these start at about 16 or $17, depending on which version you get. You can get a version with Sandvik 12 C27 stainless steel or their C100 carbon steel, which is roughly 1095 equivalent, as mentioned. You can get thicker versions, heavy duty versions as well to add a few dollars. But these things feel great. You've got a just over four inch blade. In fact, on both of these knives, you're dealing with about a four inch blade, just over four inches on the, the number two actually. Great ergos, great in a lot of different grips. Feel way more premium than $17 that this particular orange accented version goes for. And they come with a very hardy injection molded sheath. Again, compact, lightweight. Comes with a clip here on the back that with a J hook on the bottom that'll help secure it to your belt. And you can use, uh, hang it off of some of their other accessories as well. Fantastic value knife. And this right here is why Mora over really anything is a thing because it's so nice and so inexpensive. Uh, one more we're gonna look at as we uh, look at the competition, the Bushcraft Black. Before the Garberg came out, this was the go-to for folks who wanted a, uh, a Mora knife that was affordable and was built 
incredibly robustly. It, it is not a full tang here, but you do have a pretty robust, pretty long tang underneath the injection mold. It handles. The blade is a little bit thicker, 3.2 millimeters. It comes with the uh, Bushcrafter's favorite feature, the crisp spine, so you can scrape with it. You can strike a fire steel, and it just feels very good as well. Sheath on this one. Uh, there are a few different sheath options available. This one has injection molding, and you can either throw a clip or a belt loop on the back here. Both are included in the package of this one. And these start about 46 bucks right now. All three of these knives make great options. They do things a little bit differently, but what else is out there? What can hold a candle to these, if anything? I'm gonna show you and you're gonna let me know. Let's start with some of the, uh, something that might compare favorably to the classic style Mora. There's actually not a lot out there in this price range. And price range is important when we're talking about this. That Bushcraft Black there is like 46 bucks. So anything on this table, nothing's gonna be over $50 today. Uh, in the 2024 pricing scheme anyway. Classic Mora is about 36 bucks. Uh, we can check out a Finnish brand, Martini. This is the Lynx 131, four and a quarter inch blade, about $45, so not quite $10 more than the number two, but you can definitely see a lot of the same nice things going on. We've got a stainless steel blade here with a more uh, aggressive clip point. Uh, I'm not actually sure the exact makeup of the steel, but they are pretty well respected. The handles definitely feel a little bit nicer. You've got curly birch, a little bit of a flare on the end, definitely a bit more of that uh, finished Puko style of influence. Feels great too. So the question of this versus the number two is, does it feel $9 more premium than that? You do get, I'd say a more premium sheath. Stitched leather all around instead of the injection molding bit more of a, uh, a, even more of a classic feel, I should say. The only other thing that we carry that I felt really uh, could compete in terms of kind of classic vintage feel uh, is this next knife. It has a bit, definitely more of an American style flavor than a Scandinavian style flavor. Uh, and that would be the Old Hickory Fish and Small Game Kephart style knife. 26 bucks and some change. You've got a four inch blade of carbon steel, 1075 I believe, and hardwood handles, full tang in this case. So maybe a little bit more robust, still feels quite good, even though it is a bit of a uh, blockier handle. Here it is compared to the number two right there. What do you folks think? Uh, the sheath on this is also a little bit nicer. You've got leather all around, simple belt loop on the back, nothing complex, but still quite nice. All right, let's move on now to uh, some potential competitors to the companion. And in my opinion, this is a real hard knife to beat. There's a few uh, few options here for you to take a look at though. Uh, the first is cheaper, actually. Uh, it's about a dollar less expensive uh, from Martini again. This is the Condor Timberjack, starting at about $16. Three and three quarter inch carbon steel blade, more rustic vibes as opposed to the, uh, the more spick and span style look of the Mora. But overall length is about the same, so you get more handle although it doesn't feel like more handle. They kind of feel about the same, slightly less blade. Still nice and sharp, and I should say that's actually a huge Mora benefit. Factory edges on them are absolutely phenomenal. You've got more of a finger guard on this knife, but it does kind of constrict my grip just a little bit. It's gonna depend on your finger size, how that's gonna feel. And the sheath, injection molded, not quite as nice. Uh, the plastic flap here on the back is definitely not as sturdy feeling as the clip on the Mora. But it offers a, uh, a different style with a similar price and performance on this should also be quite excellent. Beyond that, Cold Steel actually makes a, uh, a few options that make, I think, compelling companion alternatives. The first one is the Finn Hawk right here. You can see it's definitely got similar influ influences as the Mora and, you know, Thin in the name, it leans into the Puko aspects a little bit more of the kind of Finnish heritage. It is a little bit more expensive than your companions. This is about $23, so uh, value for dollar is not quite as good. It maybe feels just a tiny bit nicer fit and finish wise. Uh, there's less of the, uh, the factory grind left on the uh, Scandi portion of the Finn Hawk, but that's a minor difference quite honestly. Feels quite comfortable. You've got 4116 stainless steel, a German composition, 
four inch blade, nice and sharp, nice and comfy. Feels great in the uh, reverse grip too. And sheath is very, very Mora inspired. Injection molded with the same style of uh, clip and hanger on the back. Feels really good. And if the ergonomics of this feel like they might be a little better for you, it's hard to tell without holding them in hand, quite honestly, but very good knife. But as I said, more expensive. So let's bring the price down a couple bucks. Uh, the Finn Bear, uh, $21. Same kind of steel here, that 4116. Very similar sheath, as you can see right there. And very Puko inspired again. Not a Scandi ground blade on this. As you can see, we actually have a secondary bevel. So if the Scandi is what matters to you, this isn't going to deliver. If not, another sturdy everyday knife. Even more than either of those two knives though, I think there's one knife in Cold Steel's lineup that if you don't care about the Scandi ground aspect, or maybe you do and you don't want the Scandi ground aspect, this knife is priced right in line with the Companions and feels very solid as well. And that is the Pendleton Light Hunter, $18. So a buck or two more than a Companion, you get that German made steel, you get that nice finishing on here, the horizontal grain going on makes it feel a little more premium. Nice comfy handle, works in a lot of different styles of grips. Obviously hunting is in the name, but this is just a great general purpose fixed blade for any kind of outdoor uses. And it comes with a very Mora-esque sheath again. Check that out, what do y'all think? All right, next up, we're gonna look at some competition to the Bushcraft Black. And here's where things get a little interesting because the Bushcraft Black, in my mind, has always kind of had a little bit of a split personality. Bushcraft is in the name. Yes, it does bushcrafty stuff quite well. But the handle and the shape and everything does more. Like it definitely feels like it is a compelling tactical option. If you, you know, want an affordable knife that is sturdy and can serve tactical roles, this doesn't feel out of place there due to the finger guard and the uh, shape of the tip. It's got enough belly to do hunting style tasks or just, again, just any kind of outdoor uses. So what we're gonna do with the uh, Bushcraft Black competition is actually split off those different portions of the, uh, the identity and look at the, uh, the competition. We'll start with Bushcraft since it's in the name. Uh, first up, the Pterosaur from Condor, a Joe Flowers design. Full length tang on this, which some will say is superior and 47 bucks and some change, or just under $48 for this. So a couple bucks more than a Bushcraft Black, but in some ways it actually competes more favorably with the much more expensive Garberg, in some ways anyway. But what do you got? You got a just over four inch blade here, 1095 carbon steel. So uh, for the carbon steel variants of that Bushcraft Black, you're dealing with essentially the same material right there. You've got the crisp spine, as mentioned, you've got a more neutral handle and a slimmer handle. So a little more compact, might fit some hand sizes and hand shapes a little bit better. And then you've got the protruding tang at the back that you can use for scraping as well as hammering on things, which you're not gonna get that out of the, uh, the Moras in this particular price range. Sheath is also very favorably compared to the Mora. It's actually ambidextrous. So left or right, it'll go in no problem, which is an advantage over the Mora sheaths. Those are you know, set up for right hand use uh, pretty much exclusively. And you've got a leather belt loop here attached to this slider, which can be removed if you wanna just slip it into a pack without it. Next up, another Bushcrafter, uh, the United Cutlery Bushcraft Explorer. We gotta talk about this. It's about $40, so it undercuts the, uh, the Bushcraft Black just a little bit. 1095 high carbon steel, so same type of material. Four and a quarter inch blade. And the hardwood handles here just scream bushcraft. This is a classic bushcrafty shape at this point. Feels very comfortable. You've got that full tang for rigidity. You've got a really compelling sheath option right here. You can carry it either horizontally or vertically on your belt. You've got retention straps, Velcro on these. You've got a standard belt loop there. Lot of knife for your money, quite honestly. The reason I think this is maybe not as popular as it could be Everything about this knife screams bushcraft, but it's missing one key feature that most bushcraft knives specifically want to have, and that's the Scandi grind. It may look like it, but you've actually got a hollow grind here with a secondary bevel. Still an excellent feeling knife. It's still gonna perform, but it's not gonna do necessarily that 
bushcraft thing quite as well as a, you know, a Scandi ground knife might. Your mileage may vary, your use cases may vary, so this is definitely an option worth taking a look at. All right, next up, what about some knives that can kind of, uh, you know, go after the hunting side of something like the Bushcraft Black? Uh, well, we've got, uh, I've got a few here that are kind of in between price-wise between the Companion and the Bushcraft Black. Some might say they might compare more favorably to something like the Cansbull in the Mora lineup, um, but I don't have that on the table today. So we're gonna talk about some hunters now. Uh, the Bucklight Max 2 Large Hunter from Buck Knives. It's a $32 US made knife and held up against the Bushcraft Black. You can see, here, let me do this a different way. You can kind of see some fun similarities going on right here. Uh, blade steel, you're dealing with a 420 HC. Buck gets a lot of performance out of that steel. The handle feels very locked in, works excellent in a pinch grip, especially thanks to uh, the bevels right there. And obviously this is made as a hunting knife, so it makes sense that the uh, grips would work well for those. Bushcrafty grips, if you're doing like some of the carving stuff, you know, the uh, aggressive uh, finger groove here at front, you've got a peak right behind it, gets in the way a little bit of some of those grips. Not so much that you can't use it, but it is something to keep in mind. Now the tang on this knife uh, is full length. It doesn't protrude out the back, but it does come all the way back to just where that uh, rubber overmolds the edge. So that's a nice feature. Sheath on this knife is simple nylon with a retention strap and a belt loop. Classic, affordable, gets the job done without being too fancy. You've got a hollow grind on that knife, which is very, uh, you know, very hunting in its, uh, its nature, especially on this knife. Uh, Gerber makes a few knives that could have made the table, uh, but I went with the spine because it felt the most more alike uh, in its presentation. 35 bucks for this one, 3.7 inch blade, drop point with a full flat grind, great hunting profile, great slicing profile. The handle drops and it kind of reinforces the presentation of the belly of this knife, which is gonna help in those hunting tasks. You get grip from the rubber, but you do have a full tang here. Now the steel here, 7CR series stainless. The Mora options are gonna be seen as a little more desirable, a little more premium. 7CR not gonna hold an edge uh, for that long. It is a fairly tough steel, however, so this should be able to take some abuse, especially when you combine it with that full tang there. One cool little feature about the handle, just as an aside, it's got a bit of a pattern to it that kind of reminds me of some of the old uh, like Scandinavian sweater designs. So that's kind of fun. Don't know if that was intentional or not, but hey, it's there. Sheath on this is really a bit more of a mask almost. Just kind of clips in to this injection molded piece. You got this long clip here on the side. Throw that uh, on a belt or in a pocket, uh, could work. It's a little bit springy though. So keep that in mind uh, if you like the looks of this. Feels pretty good though. And the price, about 35 bucks. Does it compare to Amora? You gotta tell me. All right, next up, a couple more hunting uh, spy inspired things. We've got another martini. And the reason I say this feels more hunting as opposed to more bushcraft is that hollow grind on this one as well. Uh, 48 bucks for this. You got a four inch 420 series stainless with a full tang and G10 handle. So it feels a bit more elevated perhaps than your bushcraft black when you're dealing with that injection molded handle. Uh, take your pick, whatever you like. Handle feels filling and yet neutral at the same time. It's quite nice. It's gonna work in those bushcrafty grips, even though I'm saying this is more of a hunting, hunting survival type of knife. In some ways, this kind of fits some of those crossover rolls similar to the uh, bushcraft black, I would say. Sheath is quote unquote nicer. You've got leather going on right here with a uh, kind of traditional style belt hanger right here, as opposed to a uh, stitched loop on the back. Definitely you know, keeps that finish flavor going on. Feels super solid for the money, I gotta say. At this next knife, one more hunting inspired competitor, uh, feels the least more alike of the things that are on the table, but due to its price and due to what you could do with it, I think it deserves mention. Uh, and that is the Schrade 169 Old Timer Heritage Fixed Blade. Most expensive knife on the table today, $49.95 five inch D2 steel blade. Not gonna be as tough as the 1095 equivalent on the Bushcraft Black, but it should hold an edge longer. So what do you want in your outdoor fixed blade? You've got an option either way. 
So like I said, it feels the least Mora like, definitely feels fancier, more premium style presentation than a Mora, but you can see why that I kind of say this has some, uh, some bushcraft black competition DNA built into it there. The handles are laminated wood, so you've got the look of wood, dyed wood in this case, but more stability. It's not going to you know, swell like a wood handle can on some of these classic knives we've looked at. You've got the integrated bolster and guard. Just feels super premium. Almost a polished blade going on too. Very, very nice. Sheath. Sorry, I haven't unpacked it, but it's leather with a retention strap. This feels on the table today, probably the most knife for the money. Is it a Bushcraft Black competitor? Is it a Mora competitor? Again, you got to tell me down in the comments. Let me know. All right, last but not least, what about some competitors to like the tactical side of the Bushcraft Black? Um, the first knife here, I think, does a good job of splitting personalities like the Bushcraft Black does, but it mostly feels like it, it firstly, I should say, feels like a tactical knife. That's the Cold Steel SRK Compact. This is a $33 knife, so it undercuts the Bushcraft Black. Here the two are next to each other. You got a five inch SK5 carbon steel blade. Should be a tiny bit tougher than the uh, C100 on the Bushcraft Black. Maybe it won't hold an edge quite as long, however. Five inches, straight clip point, flat grind on this knife. Just a very versatile shape overall. Injection molded handle here, full length tang on it, feels really nice. Thickness compared to the Bushcraft Black, it's a skosh thicker. Uh, that might be the, uh, the blade coating in this case, however. Doesn't feel quite as nice as the Bushcraft Black, but it feels just as capable to my mind. Uh, the sheath is maybe a little bit nice, well, no, maybe about it. The sheath is a little more versatile, certainly. Securex, it clicks in quite nicely. You've got a, let, or a nylon drop loop here on the back with some attachment options and versatility in the sheath that you can rig up all kinds of aftermarket solutions as well without having to get a new sheath. 33 bucks, what do you think? Two more, uh, the Schrade SCHF 31 drop point fixed blade. Definitely feels tactical first and foremost. This is a $29 knife, however. Uh, you've got 8CR series stainless steel with a four and a half inch blade and a hollow grind. You've got rubbery handles, very aggressive texturing on it to keep it in your grip. Here it is next to that Bushcraft Black. You can see the uh, why I make the comparison between these two. You can definitely press it into other rolls as well. Like the uh, buck we looked at earlier, however, the aggressive peak here behind the index finger area is going to impede certain grips. If you do any of that chest lever stuff where you're twisting the knife in your hand to get the angle you want, those are going to be affected. If not, has a lot going for it, for sure. Uh, like the cold steel, we've got a pretty versatile sheath going on. It is a single piece loop here on the back, so if you wanted to do some aftermarket stuff on here, you would have to kind of cut that off, but it is an option if you want to. 8CR steel, again, not seen as uh, as desirable as the steels you're going to find in the Mora range. Fairly tough, fairly okay on this edge retention, again, for a $30 knife. But does it beat the icon? That's the question. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I actually wanted to talk about the Ontario SP5. Uh, we didn't have one on our shelf when we wanted to film, so I have the SP1 here. Uh, which is basically just a longer version. The SP2 is a five and a half inch blade compared to the seven inch blade on this one. Uh, and it also has a saw back. But this has, you know, the tactical side of things definitely nailed down in terms of your, uh, your bushcraft black alternative. But in my mind, this also has kind of always had that, you know, use it for anything vibe to it. Great beater knife. Uh, carbon steel blade, like I said, five and a half inches, about $45 for it. Full length tang. Uh, the sheath on these is nylon. They're ambidextrous. Uh, this retention strap can go either side. So that is a nice option with the sheath. sheath. You've got molly compatibility as well. Is this too tactical to be a, like a Mora competitor? If you're thinking of, of, of a Mora as just a straight up bushcraft knife, I would definitely agree with you. But in terms of a knife that's just, you can use it indiscriminately, it starts to make a little more sense. But anyway, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to show you the competition. You have to tell me in the comments, 
what of these, if anything, beats the icon? What can take the fight to the Mora and win? Is it any of these knives? Do you know anything else that might uh, qualify for that? If so, drop those in the comments as well. And last but not least, to get your hands on any of these things you see in front of me right now, click the links in the description that'll take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our long running knife rewards program because the least thing we can do when you buy one of our knives today is give you some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.